people tell stories to make themselves feel good. And there's nothing wrong with that, so long as you are clear about what you are doing. The Hebrews copied African stories to make themselves feel good and said, that was us. Then we come down and believe it. When the story of Joseph and Mary, and I've personally seen it, in the great lodge of Luxor was carved in stone. And the story existed 2,000 years before Abraham arrived. The story of Cain and Abram is an old African story, was an old African story before they got there. And there's a whole book of flood stories. Everybody, every culture has its flood stories. Now, the Bible is not less a Bible and not less holy because it is part fiction, part history, and part folklore. It is still a book of inspiration. It is still a book of spirituality. And you can separate one thing from the other and keep it. I didn't say throw it out. I said understand it. I think you can get more out of it by understanding it. And what I'm saying is that the Hebrews copied African folklore and integrated African folklore into the book, but they personified it, saying this happened to, to, to us, when in fact it, did, it didn't happen to them at all. They merely said it happened to them. All right, now, when they had to face the Pharaoh, who knew not Joseph, and when he said, those of you who wish to obey African law may stay. Those of you who do not wish to obey African law will have to go. Those are the ones who left Africa. Now that's the origin of the essence. All the Jews did not leave Africa because some of them said that they could stay and live under African law. Jews remained in Africa. Some of them were there when the Romans arrived thousands of years later. Now, the Exodus is one of the best known stories in human history. And there is not one iota of proof that it occurred. The Bible is not less holy because of it, but this is a part of Hebrew myth. And it is a good story to teach faith. Whether it is true or not, it is a good teaching lesson. Why can't we draw the lesson from it and start worrying about whether it's true? Now, if you know the geography of Africa, you know that's a 16-mile land bridge connecting Africa with Western Asia. When the Jews came in, they walked in. They could have walked out. <laughs> so they didn't have to leave by water at all. <laughs> and if they left by water, they would have to leave further down. And if, if they left that way, then they would end up in Yemen. <laughs> it doesn't go with the geography. Look at the geography. Look at where the land, this is before the Suez Canal. <laughs> Thousands of years before. <laughs> Look, the Christian story is one of the most beautiful stories in the history of the world, but you have to separate one thing from the other and keep the story. Don't throw out the story because it is mixed with a whole lot of things that are questionable. You can enhance the story by understanding it and understanding to what extent 
The story is embellished by folklore. All right, now, 670 people came in. 70 Hebrews came in. 600,000 goes out and still leaves some. <laughs> Would 70 people create that many people, even if they spent all time creating people? <laughs> So what we have here is that a lot of Africans, not ethnically Hebrew, became converted to the faith. And they were of another religious persuasion, but not of another ethnic persuasion. And then at this time, religion was so sharp in the minds of each people Sometimes a religious person, a person in one religion, didn't feel as safe as he thought he should. Though so religious tolerance was much better then than it is now. All right, now what did they take out of Africa? They came into Africa without a clear language, without a clear religion, and without a clear culture. When they left, they had all three. Africa had made the Hebrews a people. The early Hebrews became a people and entered history through Africa. And you do not have to argue about whether they were white, black, or otherwise. The only whites who entered the area for Greeks and Romans. All right. So now if you want to figure out where the white Jew came from, <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. The European white Hebrew is nothing but a European belatedly converted to the same. That's right. In the 12th century, A.D., there were arguments in Europe because the Africans and the Arabs were controlling Spain and the Mediterranean. There was arguments for whose fight you're going to join, the Arabs or the Christians. And there was a group of people who didn't want to join either one of them. They sought an alternative, and they chose Judaism. So the Caucasian Jew is just a European who chose Judaism. And he has no ethnic relationship to the biblical Jew at all. 